to take people around the ECN now is quite difficult because you have to try and recreate what was here previously. I mean, the East End is the very cradle of Anglo-Jewish community. I get very, very annoyed when people who live outside the East End forget their roots. It hurts me and it annoys me. I'm never ashamed if I go anywhere to say I come from the East End and I'm still there when people go, you're still there? Yes, I'm still here. The Jewish East End started in 1656. The Jews first of all came from Spain and Portugal, the Sephardic Jews. Then the Jews came from Western Europe, the Ashkenazi Jews, from 1881 onwards. And people never know how many Jews actually settled in London. The figure ranges from between 40,000 and 150,000 Jews who, who came to the East End of London. My mother-in-law came over from Russia. She was three years old, she'd have been about 95 now if she'd have lived, so I'm going back quite a long, over 90 years ago. I think she came when the pogrom started. The principal trades when the Jews um, arrived from Russia, the principal trades they went into were tailoring and cabinet making was the second largest trade. Um, particularly in the East End though, um, tailoring was the largest trade that they worked in. It's a fairly um, easy to set up trade, you don't need a great um, deal of equipment and materials to start a small, low-level um, tailoring workshop, which you can expand on um, seasonally as more people, as um, there's more demand and there are more people coming over looking for work. The sweatshop owners would pick up new immigrants from the docks and employ them in fairly barbaric conditions. These people were paid a guinea a week. Often a whole family would um, live and work in a room and they may also have um, other tailors lodging, effectively sleeping on the floor of the workshop um, where they would also work during the day. Um, the buildings they were in were pretty much slum buildings. It was the Anglo-Jewish establishment uh, who weren't terribly welcoming to the new immigrants realised they had to do something for the immigrants. So they built soup kitchens all over the East End, and this is the only one that remains. As you can see, this beautiful terracotta facade is one of the few facades left of any, any Jewish building in the East End, actually. The people in the East End gave rise to, to a very vibrant community. It was such a fundamental part of British history and of London's history. Passing the Tower of London, 5,000 cashes rally to their mobilisation for the much-advertised march through the East End. When we heard that Oswald Mosley was uh, trying to organise a march by the black shirts which came from all over the country to march through the Jewish East End, every area was blocked by the population of the East End which amounted to 200,000 plus sheer numbers of people. They just came. The police did try to clear a path, but uh, failed miserably. Now the crowd take matters into their own hands. Communists, Labourites and Jews jammed the fascist route. With firm action by the Commissioner and his men, undoubtedly averted bloodshed on a scale more terrible than London has ever witnessed. I was there. And it was an inspiring moment to find and see so many young people. And it was a victory to stop mostly coming through. This borough was very badly bombed in the Second World War. Hitler's main target was to bomb the East End. More civilians were killed in the, in the, in the borough of Tower Hamlets than any other borough in the whole of Britain, actually. Certainly following the Second World War, um, most, um, and even before that, most of the Jewish community started to move out of the East End um, to more affluent parts of London, and particularly to the North West. Um, and because of that, uh, the 
the institutions and the businesses that were Jewish and were in the East End um, started closing down, moving out. There's been so much demolition. Outbreak of the Second World War, there were 150 synagogues. There are now four active ones left. All four synagogues are very much at risk. The one most at risk is the one in Fieldgate Street, the great Fieldgate Street synagogue. It's got a congregation of 10 men today. Um, it is, in fact, situated right next to the largest mosque in England and the largest Islamic center in Europe. In the 1980s, uh, members of the Jewish community started to realise that sort of the East End as a Jewish way of life was disappearing. But the result is that today there are only about 2,000 Jews left in the East End and about 1,000 of them are over 70. Most Jewish people came from the East End. You'd meet your friends there or you'd meet neighbours there and you'd meet the family there. Automatically you become part of a family circle.